It's always an honor to serve your country in whatever capacity you can, whether you're an educator or you're a carpenter or you sweep the streets. But one way you can serve your country is to become an ambassador. Now, who is an ambassador and what exactly do they do? Today, we are visiting with the Dominican Republic ambassador to Jamaica, Her Excellency Angie Martinez. We're going to be talking about a day in her life. What happens? Welcome. It's good to be here. It's good yes, to be here. All thank right, so you. Who do we have here? Yes, this is Miguel Balaguer. Nice to meet you. Our Deputy Chief of Mission of okay. the Embassy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes. And let me introduce we have? you to Aurora Navarro. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet she, you. She works, uh, she's the head of uh, Consular Affairs. Okay. And she works with me with the, all the media and communication okay. uh, stuff. Nice to yes. meet you. And, and here is well, the head. Well. Hello. Oh, hello. He is Daniel Beltre. Mm -hmm. He is the head of commercial, legal, and cultural affairs. Nice of the to meet embassy. you, Daniel. Yes. All right. All right. And of course, uh, Mrs. Janet Gonzalez. Nice to nice meet to you, meet Mrs. You. Janet Gonzalez. She's our assistant, and she is the face that opened uh, the door with a smile. Very for pleasant everyone. face. Nice <laughs> to meet you. All and right. Here is then Blaine from the Embassy of the Dominican Republic that okay. is welcoming you. Mm -hmm. As you see, this is our emblem. What does it say? Dios well, Patria Liber Libertad. Oh, but you speak very well Spanish. Okay. <laughs> Dios yes. is God. God. Patria is like a country. Country. Mm -hmm. And Libertad is freedom. Okay, so God, country, and freedom. Yes. yes. Very nice. Very yes, nice. The emblem of the Dominican Republic. And we have a Bible in our center because we are... We, we are you're a God fearing country. And oh. We're a God fearing country and we're a Catholic. Okay. Hi. Hi. Good, Hi. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Simone. Edward. Yes. Edward. Nice, nice to meet you, Simone. Edward. Yes. So, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so he is the ambassador of the Dominican Republic to the International Civet Authority. Have you okay. heard about that? No, I have not. So, so what, what do you do? Oh, what I do? Ooh. <laughs> a lot of things <laughs> for the whole for the humanity of course uh, we are we, we got here an international organization mm -hmm. is, that is part of the UN United Nations and we are more than 160 countries and, and European Union we are together working uh, for for mining the civet in the future for you know you know that the the new technology needs the, some weird uh, metals that are in uh, in the seabed that we need it in the future for the electrical batteries and so on. So hard work, yeah, hard so work, a lot of things. <laughs> all right, good and new things. Wow, <laughs> so, so a lot of new technology yeah. and all of that you're working with. Yeah. All right, so yes. my future is in your hands, so to speak. <laughs> all right. Let oh, me tell you wow. my office. Mm -hmm. I will. Well, this is the founder folder of the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is our palace where okay. the uh, president of the country is, uh, His Excellency Luis Abinader. Mm -hmm. And let me show you so much of the country. Well, this is the Virgin mm -hmm. of La Alta Gracia. Mm -hmm. It's a Virgin that we donate uh, recently to the Montego Bay Cathedral. And we have here also Kingston as a sign of friendship of Jamaica and the Dominican Republic. And so is our protector mother. And now will be the protector mother of Jamaicans and Dominicans. I thank you on yeah. behalf of Jamaica for sharing of that course, with us. Of course, can, can we sit? After the break, we sit down with the ambassador. What time does your day start usually and what time do you stop working? This is a very um, small staff. So I'm working with three diplomats and some local, you know, helps. 
uh, my executive assistant, for instance. But the thing is, as we are very small, but we have a big agenda uh, to develop here in Jamaica because we think that we have a strong relation, but that relation has a lot of potential and can expand to new horizons. But for making it happen, we have to work extra. So um, we start very early. I start since I wake up, you know, uh, 6 a.m. because I have to get to the kids to the school around 7.30 and then come to the embassy. And then we have a full agenda. Sometimes we have meeting outside of the embassy. Sometimes we have full meeting here at the embassy. And we have team meetings and other stuff that we have to follow up. So what I will say that the earliest time that we uh, leave around seven it will be the earliest. But sometimes we are here to eight to 10. Sometimes I say goodbye. I have two kids and I need to take care of them. And then I adopt my role as a mother. I do that. And when they go to sleep, I have the problem that as we are very small, staff so I have to continue sometimes working until very late but I know that it's not healthy so it's something that I have to change <laughs> but uh, uh, this is it's like that and I am very passionate at what I'm doing so for me it's not working for me it's just it's just enjoying what I'm doing and do whatever it takes place to make it happen all the agenda that we have been here uh, to closer the relation with Jamaica. How long have you been stationed here in Jamaica? Yes, well, I came on May 2021, and we are, so it's like a one, one year and four months, something like that. So you came in the middle of the pandemic. Yes. What was that like? Well, I was, I was uh, isolated <laughs> for the first 14 days, so I don't count those fir first 14 days because I was, just, I couldn't go out. But then I was very lucky that I got the presentation of my credentials on May 7, and I was the first ambassador ever, and female, who present their, their credentials to the, in the new building of the foreign minister. So I, I, I have been lucky enough to present to a woman that I admire very much, which is the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Camina Johnson-Smith, and I present also to the Governor General of Jamaica. Uh, so it's, it, it, it was a very beautiful uh, moment in my life that I will ever, ever, uh, you know, uh, have it here, yes, and we will, I will never forget. It's interesting that your team is working on the ground. You just delivered a freshly painted school because persons in society tend to think that ambassadors only attend official events and you know take pictures and stuff like that they don't actually do hands-on work so what is it that you do oh my god tell that to my son my older son sebastian who is always saying that i never stop working ambassador works a lot it's not only representative well Maybe that perception is because on the past, the diplomacy was mostly representative, uh, representative diplomacy, but now it has to be a must action diplomacy. So we take actions. We are seekers of opportunities uh, for our countries. In order to do that, we have to get involved with the commercial affairs, with the political affairs, with the cultural affairs, and with everything that is related of our bilateral relation. For example, you just mentioned this school. We were working with that school day all year long. So uh, since back September until now. Nos encontramos en la Escuela Franklin Town Primary School, la escuela adoptada por la Embajada de la República Dominicana en el año académico 2021 y 2022. And let me tell you something, not only with that curriculum that I just explained to you, but also we were working painting the school. So we wanna feel that we are part of that social responsibility initiative, even when we of course hire the experts, painter and muralists to do the job, we will involve, we will uh, personally involve. So we have the, the honor to not only uh, deliver 
this newly painted school, but also to inaugurate the academic year in Jamaica. After that, I have to come to the embassy and follow other scenes and continue working in other stores. Most of them, you don't see it. That's why maybe you always, maybe or only see, or people only see all the receptions or the functions. But we have a lot of work at the embassy to be done. Uh, but the thing is, most of them are very sensitive. There are a lot of things that you cannot talk about that that are happening between the two countries. And that is like maybe the 80% of the job that we are doing. And, and maybe the 20% you can show on the social media. Coming up. What are some of your proudest achievements so far? Well, I can say that I have many. like you enjoy your work and you have a good rapport with your staff have you always wanted to be an ambassador well <laughs> not like that like to be an ambassador uh, but uh, at the big well to be to be honest when I was very young I want to be everything <laughs> I want to be an astronaut which is very very far away to be an ambassador I want to be a congressman. Mm -hmm. I dream it to be a congressman all my life. And I wanted to be an actor, an actress. I, I want to be a director of filming, filming director. I love that. And then I realized that I was too in low and that I love low. So I study, I, I made my study in the public university of the Dominican Republic, the first in the new world is a uh, Universidad Autónoma of Santo Domingo. So I decided to study law. And then I realized that international law was my favorite in all of them. So, and I, I make myself participate in some mood court competition. And I think that those mood competition was who drive me here where I am today, because I realized that is what I want to do. Uh, that was Moot Court Competition for Human Rights. I am a passionate of the human rights. And I won the competition in my country at the, at the la national level. And then I, I went to Washington DC to American University and get in a very good place uh, with 88 universities. So, that was part of the experience. It was definitely a transformative experience for me that told me that I want to be a diplomat and I want to represent my country. Then I went to another mode competition where I, I won as a best delegation and best negotiator. So, and I say, definitely, I want to do that. I want to represent my country. I want to be in the United Nations. I want to be an ambassador. If I could be, of course, I want to be a diplomat. So being an ambassador is a dream for me, it was a dream for me, and is the greatest honor that I have ever had. Is this your first what, station as an ambassador? Jamaica is your first station? Yes, I'm a career diplomat. So I have 18 years working as a diplomat in, def in different countries. I started in Madrid, and then I, uh, my government moved me to Paris, Paris, and then I moved to United Nations in Geneva, where I was in charge of human rights. And then I went to Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C. was my last um, uh, duty as, as a diplomat, not being an uh, ambassador. Itself. I was ambassador, but I was not chief of the embassy. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica, yes, Jamaica is my first post as ambassador, chief of the embassy. So is a, Jamaica brings me luck, as my <laughs> son Sebastian said when he just arrived here. He said, Jamaica brings me luck, mommy. So uh, I think that for me too. Okay, so what are some of your proudest achievements so far since you've been stationed here in Jamaica? Well, I can say that I have many. Some of them uh, is, well, before having three months here, 
uh, as ambassador, I, for example, established the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce in the Dominican Republic. That was a great achievement, and I did it in less than three months. So I feel very proud of that, and it, that's, of course, part of a teamwork, and I also have support of, this, of the companies uh, doing you know, business with Jamaica uh, in the Dominican Republic and vice versa. So without their support, it wouldn't be possible in this like a record Guinness, Guinness, Guinness time, yeah, right? Another great achievement of this embassy, I will say, is increasing and the commercial relation between Jamaica and Dominican Republic, putting Jamaica in the map. I always heard people in my country that say, oh, before you were ambassador there, you, we, 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 we heard little about Jamaica as of the diplomatic relation. I mean, of course, Jamaica is very you know, famous and we love Jamaican culture and the reggae and Bob Marley and uh, use and Bolt and all that is related with Jamaica. But I mean about diplomatic relation, commercial trade and all those stuff. It was not like in the map is what people always tell me. And now that you are there, like everybody's talking about Jamaica. So Jamaica is sexy, Jamaica is hot right now in the, in the Dominican Republic. So I feel very proud. I feel very proud because I think that uh, my goal of strengthening and enhancing the relation between Jamaica and the Dominican Republic, we can see. We can see because there are results. All the companies that call, call from Dominican Republic and here from Jamaica call us as an embassy because they are interested in doing business with Jamaica or with the Dominican Republic is the result of the hard working that we are doing in order to promote the commercial trade between us and promote investment. And in that part, as I say, we have a very strong commercial relation with a very good investment of the Dominican Republic in Jamaica as Hyundai Magna Motors, Fersan, Inca Caterpillar, and Terrestra, and other companies that are doing very good in Jamaica. But after we took office, a lot of big important companies of the Dominican Republic are putting their eyes in Jamaica as a destination for investment. So I feel very proud of, of that. I really feel proud of uh, this initiative, Dominican Embassy uh, School Adoption Program, because it's a way to promote our culture, but it's a way to make us closer than ever, our cultures as a people, as Jamaica and the Dominican Republic. And that's all, is something that I want to achieve, to make us closer than ever, and I, I think that we are achieving this through this program. And there is so many things that I can be proud, but I will mention just last one. And it's the direct flight between Jamaica and the Dominican Republic. That is definitely a big achievement because that will be a game changer of our bilateral relations. So when we'll have the direct flight of our two countries, we will not have to go to Miami, Panama, and other, another destination to connect with Jamaica. And before we were spending 20 hours, 11 hours, depends, to connect two countries that are very close, that we are neighbor. But now we are doing direct flight in just one hour and 10 minutes. So look at the difference from 20 hours or 24 hours, 11 hours, to one hour, 10 minutes. That will impact definitely in increasing the commercial trade, most investment between our two countries, the tourism, but most importantly, will make our cultures closer together, as I mentioned before. So I know, I am convinced that in 20 years, I will not be here maybe as ambassador of the Dominican Republic, but I know that the red fly and the things that we are making today to change our relation to a new era between Jamaica and the Dominican Republic, we will see the impact in people talking Spanish, in Dominicans coming a lot to Jamaica and understand each other better and make us like a better sister and brothers. To give you an example, uh, this uh, direct flight between our two countries, which is very important, will not be possible uh, without the support of the Jamaican authorities. 
uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Mining and Transport, uh, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, and of course, the Jamaican Aviation Civil Authority. So they have been giving me all the support so we can achieve this. So our two countries have a direct fly, but that applies to all the initiatives that I have been working on. So I am very lucky to have the support of the Jamaican government, absolutely. In terms of female leadership, how do you feel making these strides across the region? Do you feel that you're achieving something, that you are inspiring other women, other baby chicas to aspire to become an ambassador because back in the day, most ambassadors were men. To be honest, I, I will be honored if I get inspired someone by what I am doing. And mostly if it's a girl. I think that the times are changing. So most women are leading companies, uh, in, uh, public institutions, private institutions, international organizations. So that change you can see by seeing uh, ambassadors like me being a female. But the only thing that I do is to do whatever it takes place uh, or it needs with my heart. And that is the thing that they can, that I want, they, they, they can learn. That if you do things with your heart, things will be, you know, positive and, and everything will be uh, transformative and you can make the change because you are, you are working with your heart. I'm putting my heart in this that I'm doing. I'm putting all my energy. I'm putting all my efforts because I, I have been uh, learned during my life that efforts paid off. So I, I think that the girls or the women of the future need to continue being doing what they have been always doing, putting their heart when they are uh, raising their children. So it's the same with the companies or with the embassy or whatever it takes place. So continue to work with their heart to make this world a better world. And I know that when women lead, we can make a better world. <laughs> After the break, this is the ambassador at home. <laughs> a little more relaxed. Hello, I see you're here already. Welcome to the residence of the Dominican Republic. Oh, thank you so much for having us. You have a beautiful home. Thank you. We are very lucky to find this home to be with our family here in Jamaica while I'm ambassador. Uh, Jamaica is beautiful, yes. And I love your dress. So this is the ambassador at home. <laughs> a little more relaxed because I was showing on TV. <laughs> but yes, more or less. More or less, uh, I'm a mom, mm -hmm. so when I come back from work, from the embassy or any place that I'm meeting or whatever, I come back to be Angie, the mom, the mother and the wife. I have two boys, so <laughs> you can imagine. It's, one is six years old and the oldest one is 11 years old. They're pretty young. How do they take you moving from one country to another? How did they? Well, to be honest, it's very difficult for kids because they lose friends. The youngest one was easier than the older one. The older one was has a little crisis, uh, crisis, mm -hmm. uh, because he's he was losing uh, some good friends from Washington D.C. That was the country that we used to be before coming to Jamaica. But then when they came here to Jamaica and they they see that all year long is summer. They see the palms, the beautiful weather, the beautiful country. They see that they can have a pool all year long. So they feel very happy, of course. 
they are very, very happy, to be honest. What about you? How are you liking Jamaica so far? I love it. Really, what do you like about it? I love, country? I love Jamaica. I'm in love with Jamaica. I love people. Well, first, I feel very comfortable because it's very similar to the Dominican Republic. We are Caribbean. We are islands. So we have a lot of similarity uh, besides the language, of course, which is different because we talk, uh, our language is the Spanish. And here is the English. It's an English Caribbean uh, country. But beside that, we have a lot of in common. So I feel like I'm home. Before being here, I was in Europe for more than 10 years, like 12 years, actually. In Madrid, Paris, and um, Switzerland, Geneva, and then Washington, D.C. So I was always in cold weather. So being here is like being at the Dominican Republic, always summer. Uh, it's beautiful. The beaches that you have are beautiful. The mountain, I love. Jamaican mountains with the light at night is so, so beautiful. And I love the people, the passionate that they are. So I feel very identified as, as Dominican with the Jamaican because they are very passionate. So who is Angie? Because regular people would be probably looking at you and saying you're an ambassador, you're in a career that's above average, but you're a regular woman, right? Of course, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I am a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend. I'm a person who has a profound love for his country or her, my country. And I am a human being that cry, uh, that love, that sometimes get depressed or let's say sad. Mm -hmm. um, so that have all the emotions that people has there that can be a uh, feeling important when they cannot, what I cannot achieve something. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I am very persistent person. So I, when I am, when I set a goal, I just work hard until I achieve. And I am always looking for excellence. So that's a characteristic that define me the best. I'm very persistent and I'm following excellence, but I am a human being. So I cry with my children and I get uh, joy and happy with them. I, and I'm a real person, of course. What are some of the activities that you do with your boys when you're home? What do you do with them? Well, um, we try to dance <laughs> sometimes. Uh, there is a, a play on Nintendo Switch that is called Just Dance, mm -hmm. and I like very much to do that with them. So I, I, I lost a lot of a little weight <laughs> while having fun with them. I like a lot to tickle them, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of that during the night time. So they come to the bed and set up settle down with me and I tickle them, they tickle me. Oh. So this is a play that we do together and then they calm down and they fall asleep. That's something that I like a lot to do with them. And um, any place to go to the pool, uh, play volleyball, depending what is the, in the ambience that we are, yes. Oh, do they tend to stick to mommy when mommy is home? Do they wanna hang out with you a lot? Or are they at the independent age now where they're okay? <laughs> They are independent, both. They are very independent, but they are very mommy too. So it depends. It, it depends. Yes, when they are in their own things, like playing or watching TV or whatever, or, or the oldest one that love to read. So uh, they are independent. But let me tell you something, even when he is reading, uh, now I remember that he is attached me, reading just beside me because I'm home. And the, the youngest one, the same. He is doing something, but he is doing on my side. So they are both. They are independent when they need to be, uh, because they are, but they are very attached to me when they want to be attached. How are they with English? Because their mother tongue is Spanish and they're pretty young. So are they really getting into communicating in Jamaica? Because they go to a Jamaican school, a regular school. Yes. So are they having trouble communicating? No at all. No at all. Well, Sebastian was born in Switzerland while I was uh, posted there in Geneva. And, and then he was in Washington, D.C. So his all school uh, academic uh, is in, was in Washington. And the same for Matthias. He came from Washington, D.C. He started school in Washington, D.C. and then transitioned to Jamaica. So both of them knew English before coming here to Jamaica. 
Of course, every day they are getting stronger and improvement and improving their English. So apart from coming home and playing with your boys, what else do you do when you get home from work? Well, I make sure that they have done their homework. Sometimes I have to work with them. It depends if it's a, you know, a, a presentation that they have to do or something more complicated or even try to follow up things or if they have a test, I normally follow that with the oldest one and with the youngest one is easier, you know, because it's very fun what they do for him, but it still is homework. So I follow that. I read some story to the youngest one. Uh, he loves it. With the oldest one, he reads alone, so that is not part of my of my business. Um, mm -hmm. But I just try to be beside him while he is he is reading. Um, what we are trying to do with the oldest one also is to do some exercise. So we both share that we are very lazy <laughs> concerning exercises, or I always like very tired when I finish. Uh, uh, the embassy's work, and but I, I am trying to, you know, with him, to encourage him to do it, and he encouraged me to do it. So we are support, supporting each other. So that is a routine that we have been implementing uh, from a while ago, that is working um, at least 30 minutes daily. And um, sometimes I get, uh, you know, uh, dinner with them, of course, play with them, as I said, and, and try to be around and, and grab them and kiss them a lot. Uh, that part, you know, I'm a, a little obsessive with all the kiss that, that I give it to them. But they know that I love them very much and they say that they love me more. So we have that argue <laughs> every day when I said I love you more and say, no, 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 mom, we love you more. So I love you more. So it's just, it's just being a mom. It's just to care them. It's just to give them the love that they need and to try to feel, to they feel as comfy and as secure. Yeah, I understand. In since, the they're, atmosphere. since they're moving around a lot, you want to ensure that their surroundings is as comfortable as possible. Yes. And, and this is the place that I love the most to be in my house. I love to be in my house with, in my happy place with my kids being quiet and just being all together. Coming up. Has it been hard um, moving your family around? It's always a new journey. it been hard um, moving your family around? You, you move with your husband and your two children mm -hmm. to, to your various posts. Is it hard as a family unit? Yes, of course, it's hard. Right. It's hard, but well, because you are moving to another place. Uh, the previous place, we have friends, of course. We have even family. I have my two brothers living in Washington, D.C. when I was there, and they moved because of me. <laughs> so... Uh, it's funny because uh, they moved because of me and the, uh, the other one that moved uh, later did it like uh, just a few months before I was posted here in Jamaica, but that was a totally surprise. You know, the government posts you and decide what you have to be in each uh, administration. So, uh, of course, that was hard to, uh, you know, to be a part of my family that was in D.C., uh, to be a part of my friends, uh, of my colleagues from the previous apart, embassy. Apart them, yeah. So it's hard, but it's always a new journey, a new excitement to discover the new adventure. So Jamaica was my new adventure that I wasn't planning at all, but the government decided to make me ambassador of Jamaica. And I assume with great responsibility, with very humble and, and very committed to deepening and strengthening our bilateral relations. So I'm very happy and very honored. But how has it been for your husband? Because he moves with you as well. Yes. Well, my husband is a career diplomat. He's also an ambassador. We have been very lucky that our government decided to send us together as a couple to Jamaica. 
So I'm in charge of the bilateral relation as ambassador of the Dominican Republic in Jamaica, and he is in charge of the International Civil Authority. So he has his own agenda, his own work, so he's busy and he's happy with the work that he is doing. So for now, we have been looking because not always is the case. It has been other occasions that Edward, my husband, has be in another post in another country. Once I was in Madrid, he was in Berlin, Germany, and one I, once I was in Paris and he stayed in Germany. So uh, has been moments that we have to divide because we have the same career. And in the diplomacy, you, you can be assigned anywhere. You mentioned that you have been in this career for more than 10 years, and he has been a part of this career as well as a diplomat. How did you meet? Did you meet on the job? Uh, no, actually, I have been here for most than 18 years. Oh, 18, 18 years. years. Sorry. It will be 19 years soon. Uh, and he has been the same, like around 17 years. So, um, how did you meet? Oh, how do we meet? <laughs> okay, we met at the university. Really? Yes, that was a real love story. <laughs> so young. Yes. So how, how long have you been married then? Well, we have been married since 2006, so 15, 15 16 years, 16 years on December, to be precise. And, uh, but we have been together since we were at the university. First, we were just friends, like uh, colleagues from the university, and, but then classmates. But then uh, we understand that we like each other mm -hmm. and we start with our relationship back in 2020, 2001. Mm -hmm. So everything starts at the University Autónoma of Santo Domingo, uh, the first university of the of the new world. You, you mentioned that. I see <laughs> yes. you're very proud about that. Yes, I'm How, very proud. Okay, so you say it was a love story. Tell me the story. Oh my God, this girl. <laughs> <laughs> what was the so, story? So, um, well, we went to the university together. I saw him a lot. Uh, he saw me a lot during the class. You know, at the, we were at the same university. He was a... Uh, uh, was a leader of uh, the student community. So a lot of people know him and a lot of people follow him. He was popular. He was very popular. Was he popular with the girls? Yes, he was very popular with the girls. <laughs> so, and uh, once he was going to an election as a president of the, that association of, of students. And, uh, and I went to the place that he was at the faculty of law of my university and I say, you know what? I, I'm not in politics, <laughs> but I will vote for you because of you and I like you. That was bold, <laughs> bold. Yes. So uh, we start like that. And then, and then we start, you know, um, reaching out together and hanging out together. And I participate in a mood court competition that I mentioned this morning. And uh, we was a boyfriend and girlfriend, but he was one of my coach. Mm -hmm. After that, mm -hmm. few months after, we start dating and uh, we start being a girlfriend and boyfriend. And then we decide to go together to University in Madrid. So, and then we did the same in Paris. So we studied our master's degree and PhD together in Madrid and then in Paris. And so we will have been like uh, looking at the same direction all the time. And he is my best good friend and he is my best advisor. And he is definitely my balance. Definitely, definitely. So you, you have similar interests and similar desire to, to serve your country. Yes. You're lucky. You're a lucky, lucky lady. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. After the break. Which is your favorite job? Being an ambassador, being a wife, or being a mom? You mentioned that off camera that you also host 
events. Tell me about that. Is that a part of your job or is that a part of Angie the person? No, that is part of my job. So you host a lot of events. Yes, to be honest, I don't like hosting and I don't like going to reception. Well, before being an ambassador. And I remember that I was in the other's embassy that I always asked uh, my ambassadors to send someone else and not me to go to the part of the recession. I, I really don't, I, I'm not in that. You know, I prefer to be uh, on the front desk mm -hmm. doing a report and uh, sending messages, emails. Okay. You, you, you prefer to be in the field working. I, I prefer to be working, real working and producing documents and thinking. I love to do that. I love research and I love to, to, to write. I love writing. But being uh, on receptions and functions was until now not part of my life or I didn't under uh, interest me too much. But let me tell you, now that I have to do it <laughs> because it's part of my job, I'm enjoying it. And I have a very good community of uh, good friends and in the diplomatic corps of Jamaica, uh, other ambassadors that have become quickly our family. So it's, it's, it's beautiful when we have the opportunity to gather together to exchange about our cultures and to, and to be friends, yes. Which is your favorite job? Being an ambassador, being a wife, or being a mom? Being a mom, definitely. Let me tell you something, Simone. There is nothing nothing in your life. There is not um, important role or higher that it could be, that could be compared to be mom, to be a mother. So I think is the, the most greatest uh, gift from God to be a mom. So that is nothing that can compare uh, the joy to give birth and to love without hesitation, without limits. Uh, and you are not expecting something on return. You just give love. So um, I think that the most wonderful thing that happened to me until now, and until I am not here in this earth, planet, and this life, will be definitely to be a mom. Would you encourage your children to enter the career of being a diplomat? Of course, if they like to. My oldest one, I think that he will be a writer because he has a very good talent to write and he's anti read a lot. Uh, but he could be a very good diplomat because diplomats need to read and to study a lot. So maybe he can be a good diplomat or a good lawyer, who knows? His dad wants him to be a, a good economist, like my dad. And uh, the other one, whatever he wants to do, he's, he's, very, he's very passionate. Uh, he is very artistic, so maybe he could be an artist or maybe he could be the diplomat and not the, the oldest one, who knows? So I will, in any case, support them, support them in what, whatever they choose, and I will try to, uh, to show them with example that anything that they decide to do, to put their heart. It's what I've been doing all my life. Put my heart in everything that I'm doing, so the results, you can see it. So I will encourage them to, to uh, effort, because efforts paid off, paid off, and to continue studying until they decide what they want to be, because if you study hard, I will teach them that they are unstoppable. They know, because I, I always tell them that if they study hard, and they work hard and they are disciplined, they are unstoppable and they can reach whatever they want because the sky is the limit. All right, so we're about to have lunch. What's on the menu? Dominican flag. <laughs> That's the name uh, in, in Spanish is la bandera. So it's the flag. La bandera dominicana. Dominican flag is the name. So we will have rice, beans, like a stew beans, uh, chicken, stewed chicken, of course avocado, because we have avocado all year long, uh, very good avocado, salad uh, with different, you know, um, things on the salad, and of course we will have uh, dessert, and we call tres leches, it's like a three, three milks, oh. that will be the dessert with a cherry on the top, 
very nice. <laughs> Sounds yummy. Yes, and I forget to say the, the best part, we are going to have Kong Kong. Which, what is Kong Kong? <laughs> Kong Kong is the rice, but it's the part on the bottom of the rice. Oh. When you are cooking the rice, yes. the part that is just at the bottom that gets a little yes. very cooked. The, the pot bottom, that's what we call it in Jamaica. The cup was or bun bun. Okay, the bun bun? <laughs> yeah, bun bun. And we call kong kong. <laughs> similar. So similar. Right? You know, you see that we have a lot of, yeah, a lot of common things, yes. a lot of similarities. Yes, yes. Okay, sounds yum. Madam Ambassador, <laughs> thanks so very much for having us hang out with you so I can see what it's like being an ambassador for a day. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was my pleasure, Simon. Thank you for being here at the embassy. And, and I'll see you next time. Come back. Of course. All right. Bye. Bye.